Welcome to Contento Custom Guitars, where a nerdy ass luthier, that's me, uh, documents his guitar building and repairs. Uh, this is my first video, so I figured I'd talk about how I got into guitars, uh, found my way to luthiery, show off some of my previous builds, give a quick top sh shop tour, uh, and discuss what I plan on using this channel for. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance for lack of eye contact and rambling. Uh, I'm going to try and stick to the script. But, um, you know, when I'm nervous, I get distracted real easy. Um, it is who it is. It's who I am. It's what I be. Sorry. Uh, but hi, I'm Joe Contento. Uh, I'm originally from the lower Mid-Hudson Valley region of New York State. Um, when my mom was still pregnant with me, uh, my dad would put headphones on her swollen belly uh, and blast Clapton, The Beatles, Hendrix, Allman Brothers, Classic Rock, you name it. Um, as such, I can say that my love affair with guitars is literally older than I am. Um, that said, I didn't actually start playing guitar uh, until my first few semesters of community college. Uh, I always wanted to learn, but I had a lot of self-doubt and anxiety um, as a kid that really got in my way. Uh, thankfully, I had some great friends help pull me out of my shell, uh, showed me a couple chords, you know, rest is really history. Um, still struggle with feelings of worthiness from time to time. Uh, but trust me, I am way better than I used to be. Um, in the summer between community college and real college, um, still inspired and encouraged by my buddies, uh, I assembled my first kit guitar. Uh, it was a crazy, tumultuous learning experience. Uh, it was an electric roller coaster of emotions as anyone who's ever attempted a new skill with zero training guidance or expectations can tell you. Um, you can actually search the Ultimate Guitar Forums for my old build blog, and there's even an abandoned uh, YouTube account here uh, where a young novice me demoing it quite poorly. Uh, so there's that. A um, little, little um, bittersweet about it, you know, because of all the mistakes and stuff I made it, and it really taught me a lot of things that I don't like about guitars. And mostly this thing, um, you know, taught me that I hate Floyd Roses, because um, that was a thing I thought would be cool. I didn't have one at the time, and I thought I'd try it, and it turns out I didn't hate them. Um, because of that, this guitar just really sits on the stand, not doing nothing, and it's sad because it's otherwise, you know, a pretty decent guitar. Um, let me show it to you right here. This is it. Ended up getting this beastie uh, off of Grizzly Guitars or uh, Grizzly Power Tools. You know, it's called the Samba Firefly. It's got some cool bat inlays. I uh, put some Seymour Duncan um, P-Rails in there. Uh, came all routed and shit. All I really had to do was um, just glue the neck on, do some finish work, um, you know, put the electronics in and, you know, set to go, do a setup and go. Um, only thing I did do is I made a little extra hole there for the little mini toggle switch to do all the crazy coil splittings and stuff for these things and it sounds great and it's wonderful and it's amazing but I can't stand this Floyd Rose so like I said it just sits there um, really makes me sad but I didn't do any of the woodworking came completely set like that um, I just did all the finish work and it was terrible absolutely terrible and amazing all at the same time um, so yeah, I did that, sort of planted a seed in my head, um, sort of stayed dormant for years because it was such a mixed feelings about it, but, you know, I did the thing, and that's really all that matters is that, you know, I did the thing. Um, anyways, uh, for real college, I went to SUNY New Paltz and graduated in 2010 uh, with, a, with a bachelor's degrees in graphic design, um, and then I spent the next decade doing absolutely nothing with that degree. Uh, I used all the skills that I learned in class to doodle guitars for any of my schoolwork that I could. Um, but in the end, graphic design wasn't a career path I wanted to pursue. Uh, I worked restaurants, I lifeguarded, I was a park ranger for a little bit, I just did a whole bunch of other jo odd jobs to make a living during this time. You know, I tried working at a printmaking shop for almost a year, but it 100% confirmed why I didn't want to go into the field at all. Um, during that whole, you know, decade there, I was part of a couple bands, um, you know, which was tons of fun, got my playing chops up, you know, really forced me to grow past my stage fright, you know, sort of get over myself in a lot of things, um, 
know, I made a musician, a bunch of musician buddies, uh, got my hands on a lot of really cool guitars during this period, you know, gigging and sharing the stage and, oh, my bug guitar, string broke, I gotta change other things. So like, you know, the usual stuff, you know, just played a bunch of different guitars and a bunch of different friends' guitars. Um, and in handling those varied axes, I figured out what I liked and didn't like and wanted and needed out of a guitar and what I didn't need and what was superfluous and all that other gimmicky things and whatnot. You know, I came to realize during that time that, you know, there is no stock guitar out there that's right for me. You know, I'd been using one type of guitar for my stoner metal band and, you know, something different for my indie folk band um, and so on and so forth. And, you know, and I had a range of tones in my head for each project and you know a certain feel that I came to expect from the instruments themselves you know I'd I'd started to think that I wanted to compile all of those things into one guitar that could you know recreate these specific voices in my head while being you know ver versatile and comfortable enough to fudge the lines between you know the things that I wanted to do than what I had been using um, in that pursuit, I found out about, you know, Warmoth Custom Guitar Parts um, and, you know, going through their website and specking out all of the different parts really got deeper into the nitty gritty of it uh, than I had ever previously looked into. It was really the first time I, you know, started thinking about like, oh, this is everything that goes into a guitar and this is all the things that I, you know, am looking at all of my other friends' guitars and whatnot that I'm um, coming to these conclusions that there, this is, this is what I like and this is what I don't like, you know? Uh, after fighting and winning the battle of do I deserve this, um, you know, I pulled the trigger and on, um, you know, this beautiful beastie I'm about to show you. Um, right here. It is a Warmoth Jazzmaster with some cool parts. You know, starting up here, we got, you know, nice locking Schaller tooners, tuners. You know, we got a graphite nut, you know, we got some jumbo stainless steel frets. Not something you usually see. And then you got two strat pickups and uh Jazzmaster pickup, all Seymour Duncan Antiquities. They're great. There's a little fucking push-pull volume knob there uh, that turns the bridge on uh, regardless of where the um pickup selectors out. So you get all seven pickup, you know, seven pickup combination. You get, you know, neck and bridge with no middle pickup, and you can have all three on at the same time. Uh, it's great. It's got the mastery um, vibrato there, which is just killer, you know. Don't need a lot of fucking vibrato work. That's why I hate Floyd Roses. You know, one of the many reasons why I hate Floyd Roses. Uh, I just need a little bit of warble, but, you, can, you know, you get that out of there. But on top of that, get some really cool, you know, clinking sounds out of it. So it's really cool, really versatile thing. It's got a, you know, chambered a swamp ash body, so it makes it a little bit lighter. It's still kind of a heavy guitar, but it's nice. I like it. You know, it was awesome experience coming up with all of these things that make that guitar unique to itself and something that you would not find in a production guitar. Um, and it was really, really cool. You know, it, you know, when it came to me, is came in parts like a kit, you know, just waiting to be assembled. Uh, I still had kind of a bad taste from, um, you know, the Samba Firefly. That didn't go the way I wanted. I spent all this money on this cool stuff. Still cheaper than if I had bought like a custom shop Strat or something, um, like a third of the price of that. <coughs> but, um, you know, I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't trust myself uh, to actually put it together. Um, so I talked to a local luthier at a local repair shop and he put it together for me. Um, he did a phenomenal job and I love this guitar with all of my being, but I do kind of regret that I didn't do it myself. I didn't breathe life into it and assemble it myself. You know, and that sort of regret sunk, hung in the back of my soul for a little bit. And this is the first time that I had seriously thought about what actually goes into designing a guitar and then seeing it realized. Really, really like that feeling. Um, and, but, you know, I was also still paralyzed by the fear of actually woodworking itself to make it happen. Um, but, you know, the seed that was planted earlier, you know, started, started to take root with this a little bit more. Um, 
Then in uh, early 2019, um, I had a rapid series of events befall me that uh, caused me to reevaluate how I was living. Um, it started with an unexpected death in the family, followed by 10 weeks later by, you know, another death of a broken heart. Um, <coughs> during that, you know, while I was dealing with all of that, my landlord sold the house I was renting. I couldn't find a new place before I had to be out. Um, put all my things in storage and sort of couch surfed with my friends for a little bit while I tried house hunting. Um, top of all that, the job that I had lined up after this current lifeguarding season had, um, they just ghosted me. Stopped responding to my calls, nothing, you know, completely no contact. Uh, so, no job. Um, little cherry on top during all that, a little, little aside, uh, the band that I was with at the time, um, which, you know, making music was my only real outlet, only real mental escape, real emotional thing that brought me any sort of positive feelings at the time. Yeah, we all went on hiatus, you know? I was going through shit, bassist was going through shit, drummer was going through shit, everybody was going through shit. 2019 was a rough year for us. Um, yeah, so, I mean, at that point, I was 30 years old, homeless, jobless, musicless, broken family. You know, what got me through that summer was uh, love and support of what family I did have left um, and some of the best friends anyone could find. Uh, it all sort of galvanized me to reach for something in this world that would make me happy. You know, I had a lot of hard conversations, introspection, um, and just through all of that, I sort of just remembered those two guitars I showed you. And I really just sort of took a gamble. Um, I said, fuck it, what's been, what I've been doing hasn't been working. It's time for a fucking change. Um, so I took out some student loans, used whatever was left of my, you know, meager savings, packed up the bare minimum, and I drove out to Phoenix, Arizona, stayed with some cousins, and I enrolled in Roberto Venn School of Luthery. Uh, for their 2020 build class and fall 2020 repair class. And let me tell you guys, it was the best decision of my fucking life. Absolutely. It was, you know, 2020 was the first class of COVID, so it had some troubles. But, like, seriously, cannot recommend it enough. You know, with going in with zero woodworking experience, lifetime of anxiety and fear, you know, all transmogrified in the course of, like, you know, seven, eight months, you know, into, you know, Beautiful set of student instruments, show in a second, you know, vast new skill sets, you know, a brotherhood of like-minded souls and confidence that if I could do it right here, I could do it right anywhere. You know, I can gush and wax poetically about my time at Roberto then for years and years, you know, how amazing their staff and their program is, um, but that honestly could be uh, and should be uh, a whole other video in and of itself. Uh, suffice to say that about, you know, two years later, you know, I have the life that I have now, all thanks to Roberto Venn. Wouldn't be, have it any other way. Uh, so all that said, here are my two student instruments that I built, uh, and one instrument that I'm still sort of, that I started on, didn't get to work. This is my student electric. They had us work on a Fender style. So we got some cool things going on. We got a uh, bird's eye maple neck, Rosewood board, uh, custom headstock design. Uh, I got bird's eye top there, alder back, bolt on neck, really cool. Again, I sort of styled this a little bit, uh, but uh, after an Epiphone Wilshire and, you know, sort of a Strat meets SG sort of body shape. Um, and I was originally planning on making it a bit more Gibson inspired. But, you know, they like, oh yeah, we gotta do, you know, we're gonna do Fender things. So I really sort of laid into the whole Fender theme um, and just sort of went that way. Got the arm bevels, contours, cool three pickups, you know, same, similar wiring and pickup stuff there, mastery bridge. Cool, I like it. Oh, and I got a uh, hand cut opal inlay straight from uh, Australia there. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of work cutting those. Um, teachers told us don't do uh, symmetrical, uh, geometric straight line stuff. And of course I said, fuck you, I'm doing it. Uh, 
and I did it on my student acoustic as well, which has little star inlays that are also hand cut, and God, were they a pain in the tuchus. Um, <clears throat> all mahogany, back, sides, and neck, uh, also a rosewood board, that's what I like. Uh, it does have ebony binding, so that's kind of cool, uh, and a red cedar top. Um, OM style bracing, OM size, uh, I call it my little pumpkin spice guitar. I actually took a little baggie of, um, of pumpkin spice, ground up pumpkin spice and put it in a, in a little thing and put it in the, in the sound hole there just to make it smell a little nice and when they were grading it I got my rubric back um, and they said, you know, a little note on it was just like baggie of heroin in sound hole. Not sure if bribe or lost. Uh, so they weren't sure to give me points for it or not, but I thought it was hilarious. Uh, yeah, so those are cool. And then also we started, I had some spare time, so I started another quick build, uh, working on a Telecaster body that I started, a little custom inlays. We built some, you know, we did, wound some pickups and stuff that I wanted to try there too. <coughs> Didn't get to, little matching things. Did some, um, uh, maple leaf inlays, uh, color scheme and maple leaves were our logos as a lifeguard, which had a lot of good friends doing that, a lot of good memories. Um, so I wanted to sort of commemorate that in, in this thing. But semester ended, I had to move home, move out, we got into just sort of, it's sitting there waiting for me to finish working on the home shop so I can resume working on it there. Um, yeah, so those are those. <coughs> um, where was I? Anyways, as I mentioned before, uh, I was part of that first wave of COVID shutdowns at school there. Um, and because of that, we ended up being guinea pigs for some of RV's distance learning tools, video chats, things like that. Um, but the thing that COVID did most was cause a giant boom for the guitar in making industry. Go figure, you lock people up and don't give them anything to do. You know, they want to pick up an instrument, buy them all online and whatnot. So huge deficit of guitars out and available for purchase. Um, at the beginning, we didn't really know that that's what was going to happen, but it did. Uh, you know, as, so as a student, I was scared shitless that I wouldn't be able to find a job after graduating since factories were all closed down. But like I said, lockdown skyrocketed guitar sales. So when factories did reopen, um, they needed all the help they can get to fill that demand. Um, enter Gibson Brands. Uh, they sent their head of HR and the head of customer shop uh, to the school to do a recruitment drive. Uh, held first round industries for those interested. And, um, you know, between the Gibson Acoustic Plant in Bozeman, Montana, uh, the USA plant and the custom shop in Nashville, um, they ended up hiring about like a third of our class, you know, myself included. Uh, so before I even finished school, trade school, it was great that I got a job at the Gibson custom shop and I now work as a neck fitter there. And that's where I'm at today in, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, before I go any further, I just want to say that Gibson Brands does not endorse, support, or sponsor this channel at all. Uh, they pay me to neck fit guitars at the custom shop, and that is it. They do not pay me to be a YouTuber in my shed. Uh, none of the videos that I have recorded or will record will be recorded at any Gibson Craftery and while, you know, and I, while I'm on their clock, which is not going to happen. Uh, anytime I express an opinion of a Gibson product or policy, on this channel, that's solely my personal opinion, should not be interpreted as a G official Gibson position. I'm just a cog in the machine, guys. I'm a grunt on the floor. I'm not privy to any sort of corporate gossip. You know, I work on stuff that hasn't been announced yet, so I cannot talk about it because it hasn't been announced yet. Um, but that's really, like, otherwise I don't know any other, you know, hidden secrets and all that, so, um, so don't ask. Um, now that this disclaimer is out of the way, I can say I do genuinely love my job. Um, to be part of a legacy like Gibson, especially the custom shop where I'm working on somebody's tailor-made axe, you know, it's one of those pinch me, I'm dreaming moments. I never would have thought two years ago that this is where I would be, you know. Um, is it a perfect job? No, 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 no. 
Um, but you know, no job is, I don't believe it. You know, my coworkers are awesome. My direct supervisors have my back. I can't say that about a couple of the other jobs I've worked at. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, corporate as an entity might distance itself from whatever I do and all the content on this channel. But I also know that, you know, I have the encouragement of my friends at work. Uh, it's a pretty dope feeling. Um, speaking of pretty dope feelings and, you know, corporate payouts and being gamefully employees means I have the money to put into building a home workshop. Uh, so that's kind of nice. You know, having student loans deferred means I have more money to put towards a home workshop. Thanks, COVID. Um, what really makes having a home workshop affordable, though, uh, is having a roommate. Uh, and not just a roommate, but a coworker. Not just a coworker, uh, but a fellow RV class of 2020 alumni, uh, one Nicholas Price. You know, when we both got hired by the custom shop at that recruitment drive, uh, we both agreed to house hunt together because we could save more money and, you know, put together a shop. You know, our only criteria for house hunting uh, was that we'd be within like 15 minutes of the um, commute to work and that we had, you know, a shed, garage, or some other space for us to set up tools to lay a foundation for each of us to open our own respective, you know, boutique guitar builder companies. Um, that's, that's the end game, guys, you know? That's what we wanna do. We're still a ways away from obtaining our respective LLCs, um, but every paycheck we get gets us another tool closer. Uh, it's about a 60-40 split, you know, him to me right now, uh, first couple paychecks I had had to go towards buying stuff for the house, you know, lawnmowers, plumbers, uh, plumbing tools, things like that, pesticides, you know, non-workshop related stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're still necessary things for life. Uh, anyways, I'm thankful to have him around, you know, you might see him, you might not see him, you know, he's good to have another luthier around here. He's a bit social media shy, so don't expect him to see him too, too much. Um, but he is here, he's a resource at my disposal, um, and he's just good people. Uh, now that I've done, how about we get into a bit of a shop tour? Um, this, uh, we can actually start. So, first up, I'm gonna try doing this bad boy right here. Little baby's first CNC machine. Really, really excited about it. Uh, I got it mostly so that I could do inlay work, um, is what my main goal for it is. As you saw before on my student guitar, um, I really like uh, flat surfaces, symmetrical designs, um, really, really things that are hard to do when you're cutting it by hand uh, that require a lot of mathematical precisions. And whatnot, and I think that's where you know computer guided designs and computer you know machinery you know have that precision. I think that's really where you're at. Um, so using this is going to be mostly for that type of stuff. I feel like also feel like it's a good transfer of my graphic design skills. You know, working with Illustrator and all those other vector programs there probably transfer really well to working with like AutoCAD and Fusion 360 and stuff like that. So it's, it's sort of how I'm uh, coming to terms with uh, using my past to prepare me for my future. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, next up over here is um, uh, my little spray booth and some of my little model painting hobby airbrushes. Uh, got a cool little gun style here. Got a much more uh, precision passe airbrush in here. It's gonna be pretty cool. Got a whole bunch of uh, primers and stuff, all acrylic based things. You know, I do a lot of, excuse me, um, Gundam models and things. I got some stuff on there that are primed to be painted. I do a lot of D&D uh, &D miniatures. I do a lot of hand painting. Um, so I had a lot of experience doing that and I wanna use these skills uh, to transfer over to painting guitars and stuff. It's still, you know, there's a big difference between what I have here and, you know, your, um, spray guns for a guitar size things and like a full spray booth that you like actually walk into and, and spray like that but I, I figure if I can do do some cool things on a small scale then I can do some really cool details on a big thing uh, so that's sort of where I'm at with that uh, what else we got here uh, we got oh, all of my solder and electronic stuff um, I like to keep this inside the main house here it's just more comfortable to be able to sit at you know 
a nice kitchen table rather than a dusty, um, not temperature controlled, uh, humid, dusty uh, workshop and whatnot. So there's that. Uh, what else we got? Have our nice little living room here. Oh, there. Those are all of uh, Nick's guitars. And these are all of my guitars. There's a little dehumidifier. Been humidifier over here. And like I said, uh, temperature and humidity control is a big thing. So that's why I do a lot of this stuff inside the house. Because um, it's much harder to do it outside. Uh, Nashville here is uh, incredibly humid. 90% of the time and then in the winter it's very very dry so it's easier to control the environment here where there's central air heating and air conditioning all that fun stuff uh, than it is in you know a shed uh, but inside we have this beautiful wood pile and wood library and stuff and we have some pretty cool things like some flame maple tops already in the process some nice big giant mahogany logs got some uh, Indian rosewood uh, side cutoffs for acoustics, whatnot. We got a big hunk of walnut there. We got some white ebony um, uh, uh, fingerboard blanks here. We got, I think we got some striped ebony stuff down at the bottom too. Where it's a little half white, half normal ebony. Uh, we got some cool things here. We got some necks in the work. Ebony there, some flame maple. This is a nice hunk of um, uh, black limba, two-piece neck that I've already sort of started and got a little bit of a, a diagram going on in there. We've got some really weirdo stuff. We've got some oak. We've got some uh, figured maple and red or uh, figured redwood and some cool things in there. We'll dig out another time. Uh, yeah, got big piece of coca bolo. We got we got some cool things that we're going to be using. Uh, between me and him and so now let's go out into the actual shop itself Go flipping around We've got a nice little backyard little cars little fire pit good things So this is the shop Oh, it would be nice if I had the keys to the shop one second <laughs> this is where going off script. Um, not a good idea. Don't do it, kids. Stay in school. Anywho. <laughs> Neighbors yard, all of this fun shit. And here we go fun things so start here in this corner we have you know sort of miscellaneous things going on um it's a little work in progress you see that's sort of a tabletop bench l-shaped thing that is sitting on top of a wheelbarrow uh that's going to be changed and we're going to put legs on it and reorganize some stuff a little bit and we got some tools here we got Little micro thickness sander there for nuts and saddles eventually. Um, some masks, some hard hats, a little micro router. Got the lawnmower I was telling you about before. A little miter saw on the floor. Uh, we got you know all these clamps and cool fun things and some extra cutoffs from the wood. Uh, we've got a little flat sanding table here. We got a cabinet that I'm going to turn into um a uh, drying rack eventually we have this beautiful uh workbench that we made um when we first got here to the shop and started really assembling tools and could actually put things together all of our workbenches and tools and dust stuff on the bottom love pegboard i kind of want to put more pegboard over here to put more tools up love my little uh light with a magnifying glass, gonna be cool. Great for doing inlay work and stuff. Uh, what else we got? Killer vice, cool things. We got bandsaw, really cool. Most of the stuff that we got is Jet in the shop here. Um, it was a great brand recommended to us by, um, you know, when we first went to the local woodworker source around here. Um, they were just killer. 
and recommend it for our needs. Uh, jet works. Got our thickness sander. Real fucking killer. A little vacuum hooked up. A little uh, handy dandy adapter and whatnot. Uh, we definitely got to come up with a couple more adapters for some of the other machines, but it will do. We got our little. Glad we have a nice uh, garage door to open this up and get some uh, air in here over the summer and just get any of the excess dust and stuff just going straight out. Super important. We've got our um, a big giant belt sander here. Super useful for getting uh, seams all nice. We got this awesome cart that's on wheels that we can roll all over the place. A little uh, um, table router jig and honestly all of our router stuff is in there just for storage when we're not using it. I uh, got a six inch bench top joiner right there, straight from Grizzly. Uh, really super useful, uh, makes neck seams and uh, multi-laminates just real easy. Some miscellaneous hand power tools down there. A little uh, disc sander, really important. And you know, drill press, what shop isn't complete without one. Uh, then we have this sort of center um, bench here that will sort of put other things like the um, spindle sander combo. It's got a cool little extra little six inch belt attachment. I wonder where we got the idea for that. But it's great, you know, sort of, so we can put whatever tool, this one, that, you know, anything that we sort of really need to use, the micro thickness sander, whatever. We just put it on here, use it, and then put it back on the side where we need it. Everything sort of um, mobile and in flux and uh, transformative around here. Uh, I like to play loose, keep it as needed. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, we're still getting more things as we need them. We're still getting uh, everything is in flux. Um, and every day is a new beginning. I love it. Uh, plans for the channel. I guess we can start talking about here. Um, I created this pretty much solely for Crimson Guitars, a uh, great guitar build-off. Uh, it's the 2022 competition right now, uh, and this is sort of the first entry intro video that I'm making for it. So, hey, welcome, guys. Hello, fellow competitors. Hello, Ben. Um, hope you're all having a great day. Um, so, to that end, most of, the, most of the videos that I'm going to be putting on this channel are going to be <coughs> build log and documentaries of what i'm doing um you know i probably for this competition i'm probably gonna do like eight to ten videos or so of just um super edits of different uh, parts of it i'll go in i'll make a video about my design process i'll make a video of um you know all of the things getting the body ready all the things getting the neck ready and i'll do a video of uh you know neck fit all the way up through hand sand stuff like that so on and so forth um, and do that. I really, that all said, like, I am not intending to be a YouTuber. I am not intending to be a big video editor. I'm going to do it for the sake of getting, you know, a handful of video outs, but you know, don't really expect like, you know, a new video every week or whatnot, and a little short videos. I just want to get a handful of videos sort of like, you know, slap together, put them, put them in there and do it. Um, I do want to document and share how I build. I don't want to spark conversations in the luthier community. I definitely, you know, good or bad, like talk about how I'm doing it, what you're doing, um, how it would be done differently. You know, it's multiple ways to skin a cat here. You know, I'm here to learn as much as I am to teach and whatnot. So please, by all means, comment around, you know, talk about it. Um, you know, we're, we're here to share. Um, I will say, if we're going to do that, um, I very much appreciate actual constructive criticism. When I was in school for graphic design, uh, one of the things they taught us was how to give actual uh, constructive criticism. So I'm going to pass that off to you guys right now. Um, there's really three stages to it. First is, you know, point out something you like about the work that you're seeing, you know. Say something nice, say something good. You know, you did this well, you do like that. I didn't know how to do that. I like that. I like what you're doing here with, you know, whatever. Um, just start off positive, you know, then then you can go in and say like, what's not working for you, what's bad? You know, if he's, especially for something like this, if you see something 
uh, we're like, oh yeah, I saw that technique you did, you know, you're probably gonna lead to a lot of terror out here, or like, oh, that was totally an unsafe way to go about doing it, please, by all means, let me know, um, and, 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 you know, point that out, that, you know, something is inefficient or unproductive or whatnot, but when you do that, the next and third critical part is to include an explanation of how to do it better, you know, how, what to change it, don't just say, oh, something sucks and that's it, Say like, hey, try this, you know, and go into, you know, whatever this is. Um, and that really, instead of just putting, you know, getting you down on something that just sort of really creates a dialogue where we can build something up instead of just, you know, tearing each other down and whatnot. <clears throat> um, Lord knows I'm self-depreciating enough. You know, that's, that's sort of my shtick. You know, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be down on myself enough. So please... Let's be nice. Let's be respectful. Um, but that said, also, I mean, I know in previous uh, competitions, there has been some light um, ribbing and some shit talk given between competitors uh, that some people were into and some people were not. Uh, I just want to let you know this is a shit talk welcome zone. Um, I sort of thri uh, I I fucking get bogged down in my own negative energy enough. But when it comes to negative energy from other people, for whatever reason, I can just fucking vibe on that. Ooh, I feed on it. Please, please go hard. Uh, I'm kind of a sucker for it. Um, that said, like, if you're going to do it, like, I'm an agent of karma, equ equivalent exchange bitch, it will come back full toed four times over. Um, yeah, that's really all I got to say. If, you, if you're going to give it out, you got to be able to take it, you know, in the same way, you know. If I'm going to dish it out to you, I welcome it in return. Um, <coughs> what else do I got to say? Yeah, okay, so going back to uh, how I'm not going to be posting a lot of videos here, um, follow me on Instagram instead. I'm way better at taking pictures and, you know, putting up a quick caption for it than I am for posting multiple videos at a time. Um, that's definitely the way to do it, to see how I'm doing. And like I said, uh, Instagram is where I'm going to do real-time updates of what I am doing, working day-to-day, weekend-to-weekend. You know, these video updates will definitely be much further spread between. So if you really care that much, which I hope you do, um, check me out there. Uh, and that's sort of my short-term plans for this channel. Long-term, I really have no clue. Um, if I like video editing... Versus pictures and whatnot, I'll probably continue uh, posting videos of just, you know, shop technique, general advice, um, luthier tips and tricks and pro hacks and all that other fun things, um, as I do. But also, I mean, as long as Crimson Guitars keeps doing the great guitar build-off, you know, one every year, I'll probably foresee myself entering every year. So there will be continued content that way with, you know new designs, new techniques, constantly trying to better myself and do do things I haven't done before. Uh, <coughs> so there's all that. Um, I also did mention before the eventual point of this whole, whole home shop here is that I want to eventually create my own boutique business. Um, so whenever I get around to doing the whole LLC and incorporating in like actual you know, legal, real-time stuff for it. Um, I may change the name of the channel. I might come create a completely different channel. I don't fucking know yet. I'm not the type of person to uh, count my chickens before they're done, before they're hatched. So when that happens, we'll cross that bridge. I um, think that's about it. Uh, so first and only time I'm probably going to say it, like, comment, subscribe. Or not. I don't care. I don't like how YouTubers say that at the end of every video. Um, I find it demeaning to you being told what to do. You're going to let you as a viewer, you get to choose what you're going to do. Like, if you like it. If you like it, you're going to do it anyways. You don't need to be reminded. You don't need to be told to do If you don't like it, you've, what's being put out, then you're not going to do it. And you're just going to find it insulting that it happened in the first place. So, whatever. Um, going on a rant, diatribe. I'm done. I want you to have a great day. Enjoy, stay safe, be cool. Bye!